So next up we have uh, James Strutt from New South Wales Department of Planning and Environment. Um, and James is a data strategy policy and finance executive with experience in both public and private sector. Um, most recently, he's um, obviously with uh, DPE um, and James has led a pretty significant whole of government reform initiative um, to improve the use of government's roughly $200 billion land and property portfolio um, with a focus on balancing the social, economic, environmental and cultural outcomes for the community. Um, most recently, we've been working with James and the Land IQ team to um, build out, I guess, a suite of apps that sit on Giraffe that we're calling Land IQ. Um, and these are really aimed at helping users make strategic planning land use decisions. So I'll intro James, thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Um, and thanks everyone, it's great to be here and hear all these other interesting use cases. It's really giving me a few ideas. Um, and James Blackwood, uh, thanks for your patience in managing the slides for me today. So, um, I guess, like Lucy said, I'm from the New South Wales Department of Planning and Environment. Um, my uh, sort of division very much has a role of looking at the, the state government's portfolio. And Lucy said it's about 200 billion. To put that in context, it's about the size of Germany. So it's not a small, um, insignificant portfolio. Um, but one of the real priorities for us is really looking at, well, how do we optimise the use of that land, particularly in a capital constrained environment? so that we're not putting the burden on the taxpayer and we're optimising the service we can give to um, the citizens. Um, you know, I've been in this role now for about six or seven years, and there's about as many different methodologies and ways of looking at land and making those decisions as there are people in government doing that. And so the journey that we embarked on with, with Giraffe was really looking at, well, how do we try and develop something that's more of a standardised approach that the government can use as, as a collective so that we're making quicker, more consistent decisions when we're allocating land use across government. Uh, next slide, please. So um, what is Land IQ? Uh, like Lucy um, said at the start there, uh, it, it's a collection of apps that have been built on the draft platform. We have got a couple of other uh, partners within that uh, Land IQ environment as well. WSP, who some of you may be familiar with, um, very much providing the data model that drives um, the apps within Giraffe. And Aerometrics are a provider of high quality, high resolution imagery that we have um, brought into Giraffe as well. Really the point of this, like I've said again, is to standardize as much as possible what's already across government. There's a lot of great data. There's a lot of great approaches to doing different types of things in this space. Um, but instead of going to third parties, going to consultants, uh, we wanted to bring it all into an easy to use platform that people can access as and when they need to, um, but also having it something that is modular, that people can build on, and we're not wasting time and money replicating the same sort of functionality over and over again, which um, is astounding how much that happens across the government. Next slide, please. So um, I think about uh, Land IQ has having four key components. Um, the bottom three there are the apps that I was referring to. Um, but sitting over the top of that is a, a very comprehensive data library that we've spent quite a bit of time consolidating across um, both within government, private sector, you know, international sources. Um, but something that's really easy for any different part of government to spin up a project and they're not wasting weeks or months trying to find information that's relevant to them. It's all there. We maintain it. We will make sure that it's up to date um, and so they're ready to go. Uh, when it comes to the apps, um, I think about these apps as being, um, I guess, a workflow going from the macro to the micro. We start with the geocentric analysis, which is really pulling a whole lot of information about a particular region um, and being able to look at that and compare it to other regions or benchmarks and say, what stands out here in terms of an issue and opportunity or something that I might want to consider when I'm looking at different planning or land use um, outcomes. The next app, Site Search, um, it is what it says, but it's it's providing um, I guess that sort of advanced GIS capability so people can find land that's within a certain proximity to a train station that is in a certain zoning that isn't constrained by heritage or, and so on and so on. Um, and I'll talk about a few different use cases of that in, in a minute. Um, and last but not least is scenario planning. So you found the land you're interested in or parcels of land or a precinct and you want to understand what if we change the land use from what it is now to A, B, C, D. And what are those impacts in terms of not just the financial outputs, but some social, economic, environmental, really that broad impact of those land use changes. Next slide, please, James. 
Uh, these are just some screenshots. So um, this is the part of the geocentric analysis app. Um, and what this is, the way this works is really just an allowing someone to select a bunch of regions and compare on a whole lot of different dashboards or reports. This is one of them. Um, it's really easy to use and understand from everyone from a minister in government to a graduate who's just come into government. So um, it's something that's very intuitive and user friendly and we'll definitely be adding to over time um, as we get more information as well. Next slide, please. Uh, so the site search app, um, you can see uh, you're all familiar with Giraffe interface, but on the right there, um, what we're allowing people to do is to add those criteria that's relevant for them. So they might be interested in finding land for a school, for a new resi development. Um, they could, from a government perspective, have received an investment opportunity um, from an international uh, company um, with certain specs for land that they're interested in. The way this works at the moment within government is it, it can take weeks um, or, or longer for GIS related people to do this type of work. What we've done with this site search app is effectively put that in the hands of an average non spatial user or spatial GIS technician user. So people can find land um, on the fly as required, either at a local level like that's showing there or across the whole state of New South Wales, which is like I said before, the size of Germany. Um, so being able to run that cap almost instantaneously. And then the, the last part of it uh, is the scenario planning. Um, so uh, I, I sort of like to explain this as, you know, it's like SimCity, but with real data. And what this is allowing users to do is to come in to add land uses to their respective parcels of land that they're, they're interested in, and then to run different scenarios to say, what if we change this from vacant land to medium density residential or from, um, you know, this might be uh, industrial land to mixed use, whatever it is but really easily allowing to create those scenarios um, as and when required. And if you go to the next slide, James, what we do with that then is look at, um, oh, I'll, I'll talk about it in the previous one, if you go back a slide, um, we have a, some outputs that come off the back of that, both at a local level. So looking at um, local outputs, what are some of the yields, what are some of the dwelling students, et cetera. But it also has the capability to look at it at a, at a macro level. So at this region, if we're changing these land uses at a regional level, what does that do? What are the impacts across different indicators? Uh, the, this slide here James put up, um, this was a, a real use case we used last year. Um, some of you may have seen in the media, there was a lot of serious flooding events in, in Australia, particularly in northern New South Wales last year. Uh, we used Land IQ and Giraffe in, in particular um, to effectively analyze and, and look at different sites that could be used for temporary accommodation for all the people that were impacted and had their, their homes destroyed or severely damaged. And in practice, what this meant, uh, the government had to go and procure a whole lot of different pods or temporary housing. They all had different specifications. They all housed different number or type of people. Being able to load those into giraffe as usages or typologies, we could work with the government architects and other stakeholders and update this on the fly. Um, you know, roads would get cut off by flooding, which meant one provider couldn't bring their pods in. And being able to do this in, almost in real time, um, it really enabled us to make those decisions and get those pods on the ground and people in the homes much quicker. And next slide, please. And I think this is the last one. So I guess just some of the, the key benefits from my perspective, and I'm happy to talk to anyone after this if they're interested in learning more about this, but um, really significant time saving uh, and time and cost saving around identifying it and doing initial due diligence on land. Um, and I think we position land like you not as being the silver bullet, but it's really being able to get from that long list to short list very, very quickly and being able to work with industry around most much higher value design and delivery activities rather than the, the upfront um, part of the project. Uh, and, you know, really the last point there, it's about creating a platform others can build upon. We've already got other departments within government doing this at the moment. Um, and it's something that we want to continue to evolve and work with Giraffe on over time. And that might be in the form of more apps or enhancements to some of the apps we've already developed. Uh, but yeah, it's been a great journey so far. I still think we're at the start of it, but, um, uh, that's I think that's it for me. Happy to take any questions or talk with anyone offline as well.